pi that is the core strength of the uh, core strength of the python actually the python we generally do not work on basically what we can do on c on even java we generally handle through python a lots of data and data maybe images maybe sound clips maybe movie picture and we can process on it on a huge kind of data maybe gigabyte terabyte order and uh, that is the strength and there the python doesn't add, uh, python doesn't have array like features in uh, in core python that is a list and the problem of list is you can have a variable uh, object into it so uh, basically whenever you access a zeroth element first element second element third element you do not know how long you have to jump whether it's a integer or is a character string or is a uh, floating point number so it basically linked list sort of thing your list basically this is very slow if you say lots of data say thousands of data is there list is very slow but if we can decide the data is of same nature so we can put it packed in a uh, contiguous memory location uh, like array but here it is uh, taken a uh, array is generally maybe uh, maybe limited one dimension two dimension three dimension but here in numpy a separate library is added where all the advantages of c array is there and, and lot of extra things are there because python in general python you have a limited data type but here in numpy you can uh, specify integer in various way unsigned 8 bit signed 8 bit 16 bit 64 bit 128 bit floating point also various ways so you can have a lots of options there but all the data should be there in a particular array uh, matrix we, whenever you say array is a two dimensional we call it a matrix whenever it is three dimensional we generally term it as a vector and uh, then you call or sometimes call uh, yeah sorry one is a one dimensional is a, we call a uh, array we can call it single dimensional vector a two dimensional we generally know by matrix whenever you three dimensional we generally term it as a vector and when the fourth dimensional array we can call it uh, is a tensor uh, that is the most famous thing is that right now last five years is working on tensor uh, uh, that, uh, that is, and there also yeah, another uh, uh, library is useful but they are almost 99 percent similar with numpy so what is basically numpy is very useful for handling large data and the large data occurs in images uh, uh, video processing and the image pro uh, sound processing and these all the libraries are there numpy you will see there the scipy matplotlib uh, and this all equivalent and this is equivalent to matlab matlab uh, one software written by ex mit uh, scientist is a doctor but um, the matlab is uh, not free um, but it is very uh, is very powerful and it is uh, uh, precise so uh, with your open source software it can match with the matlab okay this is so numpy is basically what is summarized i must say the numpy you have to import it and uh, the advantages you almost get like c like advantages the, the in general python list is much slower but whenever you import numpy you put large data in numpy you get c like advantages but you don't have to write c code and you can have much of complexity you can lot of sorting and uh, uh, everything you can do on that large handle of data yeah so uh, this is uses of numpy arithmetic operation statistical operation major statistical operation uh, media uh, mid calculation bitwise operation copying doing array stacking matrix operation is very important because you know that everything is you can all the fsp for, for first fourier transform image processing it can be done by matrix linear algebra you already know broadcasting mathematical operation searching sorting you probably know so all these things can be used on the numpy which is uh, uh, our python uh, list is very incapable of advantage of using numpy uh, array when in that compact array is a compact array it stored in a contiguous memory location uh, if it's multi dimensional array it is there the multi dimensional array designed for uh, scientific computation 
standard mathematical function for fast operation on entire arrays of data without having to write loop. That is one good advantage. You don't have to write loop. You just it is a command type of thing. We'll re, we'll see it in it. And editing and data dark index and with memory map files is because if the whole data come from the hard disk to your main memory, do the processing without for loop. We'll see that. And uh, random number generation, Fourier transform, linear algebra, you can get the eigenvector and all these things uh, to this. Yeah. Applications, I, uh, this is a pandas, this is very numpy with pandas. We try to cover pandas in next one or two classes. It is very useful for statistical operation, uh, sci-fi, scientific Python array, uh, whether I'll cover it. Yeah, this is a particular, we just uh, uh, import numpy as np, then you can give command uh, like np.log and initialize with at least 1, 2, 3, 4. Automatically, the this array will be created, numpy array basically, uh, with these values. Uh, if this is the code, x is equal to np.log. We'll try this code in our co collab uh, sheet, but just now I will give you an idea. And this is uh, in first line should be import numpy as np uh, that is a standard convention if you don't write import numpy as np then you have to write x is equal to numpy dot log uh, but it is a standard convention uh, all over this uh, uh, python programming that you start it as import numpy as np uh, and i prefer the print type of x i think whenever you start programming you always uh, uh, anything you declare, you uh, debug it, or it will be helpful for debugging. Later on, you can comment it out, and uh, it is what is better. You can have see this is a class numpy nd array. See, it is a different type of array. It is not uh, is a numpy array, and these are the values that we stored. Yeah. See, this is the command. It first command is import numpy as np. Then you should just give x is equal to np dot array. Uh, within this one, two, three, this numpy array. This is not a uh, list, this is a numpy array. And it all takes same uh, sizes. Uh, default sizes is uh, whatever default sizes are there. If it is in 32, it is in 32. It is there. It depends on the which uh, Python shell you are using, Python uh, interpreter you are using. Yeah. yeah, let's go to the uh, my collab sheet. Uh, just wait. going to this. Just to overhead finish, this is coming. All these things will be shared. Don't worry, you just try to get the basic things. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. Is it is it visible, please? The Google Collab screen, students, please. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. This is uh, this is the first statement. I this uh, uh, collab sheet I will share with you as usual. Uh, this is the first command import numpy and this is the centigrade values uh, uh, i created the centigrade values as this and we just uh, see we initiate this is a list remember this is a list and we said c equal to np dot array c value then print c we'll see and we we just see this print uh, fahrenheit values and we can always uh, this c is in uh, you can always check uh, uh, let me check this. Yes. Hopefully, run it. Let's run. Yeah, it is running. Yeah, it is. I think it is better you, if you write it here. Print. What should I write? Print. Always, uh, what I have told you right now before it should be type that is always better to check 
that whatever you are doing, yes, uh, I just running again, it should give it's a numpy. Yes, see it, it is here at the end of the screen, it says the NPy, the C is basically NumPy ND array and this is the centigrade values and this one the Fahrenheit values. I will just show this mouse is sometimes not working very efficiently. Let's see, this is the, it is the Matplotlib curve uh, and it is plotted all the values here. This is how I got it. You I've introduced the ne next day I'll cover the Matplotlib and little bit of NumPy more. Another uh, introduction is uh, another thing is import NumPy and this is you see print NumPy underscore underscore. This is underscore underscore means it is a very private variable. So you can you can write it as import NumPy as NT and print within bracket. Uh, np dot underscore underscore versus underscore underscore that can also be done let's we can try it uh, we can we can say import import anything you do not understand you can always uh, interrupt me and ask as np hopefully this should work and here i write This is the problem of sometimes Google co yeah, collab. Yeah, hopefully, even without asking, it gives lots of help. That is why I don't require help right now. I don't require help. Yeah, it comes to help. Okay, we just search. Uh, this is our first try. Import numpy numpy underscore underscore version. What is this? Yeah, it is a import numpy. It will come. I think I write it print 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 here numpy numpy underscore version and here also I write selection NP. Okay. Next, let's run it. Yeah, see, I, this is both operations give the same. One is import numpy, you just see the private variable numpy dot 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 and it will check it for every import you should always check version my suggestion is whenever you numpy pandas and any library you should uh, check the versions before in, in your software whenever you importing it is my suggestion it is helpful and it will always give print comment i uh, this is the first way and uh, this is another way import numpy as nt print nt dot underscore underscore version now i'll go what is the advantage of using numpy Let's go. Yeah, this is NumPy. You can prefer your data type. Yeah, in data type parameter, you can import NumPy as NP. That is a standard, and you can prefer the which data type. If, the, if it's a complex, you can. If you know the Python is only supports complex data type that your C and Java cannot do. That is one of the advantage the Python gives. Because uh, most of your you know, FFT operations, if you know the imagination, if you know the complex processing, then you know you have to get the complex number system. So if you just run it, you can ask the question at any time. Uh, let's see. What is the output? Yeah, great. So you, because your imaginary component is zero. So it is comes 1.0 as 0.j. It, it is automatically converted this integer number to the uh, floating point number, and uh, also imaginary component is zero. So it is all these numbers is there, and you just give the data type here. Here, one thing I must tell, as I have told before, that here is much more powerful than C here. 
python numpy you can you can uh, various data types whatever you can see in c that you have not seen in basic data type of python but whenever you go to numpy you will all the data types in whatever you have seen in c and many more data types like unsigned integer in, in signed integer 7 bit 8 bit 16 bit 32 bit 64 bit 8, 128 bit as per your uh, data requirement is and as much as how accuracy you require you can all put it into a this uh, your know, numpy data and that is very helpful for your mathematical calculation sometimes we need very very for it's a gravitational wave calculation you need very precise values whenever you need spectroscopic evaluation you want to processing the the, the data comes one billion years ago and you want to uh, recognize whether it is coming from uh, distant black uh, black hole so you have to have to very precise uh, uh, you need a precise data type gravitational wave i told you that is you cannot you, you can see your uh, floating point number maybe double and all these things and you can put your data in your secondary hard disk as a huge uh, multi-dimensional array with this numpy yeah that is a great advantage uh, of c over c i believe and it is as it is not as fast as c but nearly as fast as c it is not as fast as c but it is definitely 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 faster than basic data type and python yeah see here one uh, lots of utilities are there like with np data you can uh, give a range and it will automatically give zero to four uh, the data so you just uh, give give it run it here I have not given the print common. I hope the without print. Yeah, it's given. So it is basically I have given the NP dot arrange 4. It starts with 0 and not reaching 4. It gives the data 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. So it is uh, lots of commands you give the like a range. Uh, it will get it. Uh, like here. Is it visible? Uh, everything is visible. Please, anyone, please speak. This collab screen is visible, please. Shomoshri, Komolina? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. It's clear. Whenever it is not visible, yes, sir, visible. Uh, whether, whether it is not visible, whenever I am a uh, little out, uh, I, I want to teach it very slow. This is not very easy subject. And because the distance is there, anytime if you feel whether it is not visible, whether, whether I am not understood, please raise your uh, voice. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Shomolina. Uh, this NP dot arrange, see here. Uh, is a 2 and uh, and the maximum is 9 and uh, increment is 2 so it will first point 2 then 4 6 8 because next is 10 10 is out of range so this is the maximum limit so with the np range one is uh, uh, single uh, data then you get with one increment default whenever there is a three three person argument then the, it will the first term, then the increment, and this is the maximum term. You will get a NP range. And another interesting, you see it here. Let's see the next data. Yeah. yeah. Another another interesting is uh, this is very interesting. Line space. Uh, line space. You probably in uh, MATLAB. Uh, MATLAB also it is there. Line space. And some of you also try to have MATLAB. MATLAB is also very useful software. Mm, uh, it is very good. Um, it is always there as a benchmark for any scientific competition. But unfortunately, but you get a free uh, license as a student license because uh, everywhere, uh, lots of scientists all over the world want work on MATLAB and Mathematica, and Python is giving a close competition to this. And most of the commands you probably see in the same is the MATLAB. Uh, MATLAB is nothing but the matrix laboratory. So it is a company's name is. But it, lots of computational software is giving, but unfortunately, it's not free. Okay, but you can just you can use this thing. Uh, you can use student license. You can use it as a free. Yeah. The, this is another common interesting comment. Line space. What it does, it is uh, it will give a uh, uh, how many elements is come that will come. See here, we run it here. Yeah, uh, because you you give the range, 
uh, this is the uh, minimum, this is maximum, you want five elements. So this is the array automatically comes 0 0.2.5, 5, 7.5, 10. So this is the uh, difference between line space command and a range command. So the two ways you can create automatically arrays. Uh, it is very useful. Line space command, I found it in MATLAB first. They have copied it here. That I have give, told you. These cursors are sometimes problem. Yeah, uh, hopefully, hopefully, please stop, please stop. Please, please. This is too fast sometimes. Hopefully, this one. Just a minute. Yes. Yes, please be with me. Screen is visible? Yeah, thank you. So this is another way you see he here. I, I initialize, I take a import numpy the, as np first. Then I take a, a value a and initialize it np with array. np array is a command. np is a, uh, we array is a function there. It is don't take the np array. I initialize with the list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and it will give a uh, matrix sort of thing. Okay, it's a two dimensional. Okay, it's a two dimensional. So this is, uh, and, and type, and you can always, I have told you, can, okay, you always try uh, print type of A. I have not done it here, but as a, whenever I see, then you can get it what type of A it is giving. Uh, let's try here, print, print, always. This is my mistake. I should have done it. Print type of A. Yeah, let's try. Yeah, so it is basically what is the class that is give a confidence. So it is a class of NumPy in the array. This is uh, not a sim, it is not, not a very simple object. It is a NumPy object with nd array it is a nd array and this is the value okay and if you see the print what is the zeroth element check it what is the zeroth element it should come uh, one two three four yeah it come one two three four this is the zeroth element is it visible is it uh, understandable please student please sir understand. okay Great. yes sir yes thank sir. you please anytime if you do not understand uh, you please raise the question okay so great Hopefully, mouse is not too smart. Yeah. Yeah, this is NP array. I want this. I initialize another NP array. One, two, three. Uh, it will give one, two, three. That is simpler. I, I should not show it because it's a very smart, simple. Smart, simple. Okay. Another good thing is, yeah, please don't go away. This is the zeros. You initialize values with zeros. This is also the copied it from MATLAB. So I have is this, this is a uh, this is an NP array object. I initialize with zero value. This all zeros should come. Yeah, two zeros have come automatically. It is a field, and you can also field up with ones. The command is zeros and ones. These are the functions. Okay, do you remember print ones one one. This is the, these are the copied it from MATLAB. MATLAB is like this. Very simple. Hopefully, yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, you can create empty elements also. It depends. This empty uh, at um, uh, Colab, I found it. They initialize with zeros. Let's try. Yeah. In Colab, it has found that they not initialize with zero. It initializes one. But uh, I found it, uh, if you do it in another Python environment in your desktop, it would be random value. So the MP, uh, it better is not to use whenever that because it should be random value. It is just I show you as a command. It is a NP arrange, it is I have already told. And I have told it what is the data type, it's unsigned integer int. So that is the advantage with over Python here. In Python, you cannot give that command. Yeah, it already gave that. Hopefully, please stop. 
Gray. Yeah, gray. So here you see his NT range, uh, maximum is 3. And, uh, uh, and data type starts with 0, so it should be 0, 1, 2. And data type, I told that please go for unsigned integer 8 bit. And I type it, it is better always type it. You see, I'm in a class NT, numpy is NT array, and the values is 0, 1, 2. Okay. Um, uh, the, you can also, con you can also, um, another good advantage is you can uh, console your uh, numpy array, uh, type you can change it is a single command that you don't have to go for any for loop and all this like here you convert the type of array with as type or preferred type is a function like just see hopefully it will automatically go to float yeah so earlier it is 0 1 2 and now it's a 0 0.1 point 2 point we just command is as type within bracket float okay you can also Float also various times. You can you can prefer the which kind of float version is there. That is a very powerful uh, thing. Hopefully, what is uh, the, this is data type float? Yes, this we check. This is F is a shorter version of float. Okay. Yes. Great. So uh, I I in, uh, create an empty array one two three float and the print type of is this one. Okay. There are other types. Okay. I now quick, this is all very trivial. Uh, this is I have done. Data type, this is, is, is very simple. It will give the only data type integer. Yeah, in class numpy. Each sub data type it should come true, it should come true, and if you go, if it, I see is a floating point data type, it should come false, yeah, because my data type is not floating point, so you can ask certain kind of uh, Boolean questions, uh, you can convert it, you can uh, create a convert uh, and you can ask question true or false and you can uh, int it power. This is interesting, I told you. See, in normal Python, in a, in a, in a, you cannot get this huge data. This integer 64, it is not there. 100 to the power uh, 8 power. But if you see the data type integer 32, this will give a wrong value. It actually, this is I think Python fault. It should give the give the wrong values, but they give it such value which is not true. So this is I think this is this should be corrected. If you cannot give it, you say I cannot give it. But you cannot give a wrong number. So this is the NP uh, uh, numpy. You can calculate this. The power is a function, and this the base value and to the power eight it will give such a huge number because integer 64. But if you use the integer 32, you get wrong. So you have to be very careful whenever you get a very high, high, high number or very low number, you have to be very careful about which number format you have taken. Let's see. Yeah. So that, that there's a command. This is, you can always, uh, command is iiinfo.int, the bounds of the default integer of the system. You can always check it. Like here, I am checking it. Great. This is, I can get the minimum value uh, like this integer, and maximum is there, is a data type integer 14. Okay, this is great. And uh, this is the one catch. In Python and NumPy, uh, it is not a flexible. You have to say beforehand which integer type. Uh, in, in, in practical uh, Python, uh, not in NumPy, in Python, that is a very flexible. It, it can automatically be flexible to be, uh, high number range, but in whenever you are NumPy, you have to be uh, very specific which integer command, whether it is 32, 64, 8, and this is, it cannot automatically convert it. That is the NumPy uh, is meant that way. In Python, it, it will be automatically converted. So here you can see floating point, IIN4 NP, is a, is a, what is the value range, is a much lesser range, definitely.
yeah this uh, uh, again you can get it the bounds of 64 8 integers that i have already shown yeah a huge number then is a floating point the command will be given it will be shared don't worry and yes floating point and you see it here resolution and it is a uh, no uh, long double mp long, you can get it this is the maximum range you get it not more than this so this is the minimum number you will get it this is the maximum number you get it exponential to the power 4932 and uh, this you can get it let's yeah it is a same this is np array it is we have already zeros we have already done it this is redundant this we have already done it if this np array is same it is 0 to 9 it will be done it this is just practice 2 by 3 is zeros if you np zeros 2 comma 3 this is the zeros comma this is it's for practice and getting let's skip this part any point you do not understand please tell this is np once if this i have covered np log this i have covered in this is i have already covered in my ppt slides yes This is I cover NP2. This is very simple, not issue. Oh, another great point is, uh, yeah, this is this is very interesting. This is very interesting. Am I audible? Please, screen is visible. Time to time, I uh, I need a tonic from you. Shomolina, Shobusri, anyone, please. Screen is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whether you are the sleepy guy or uh, I want to uh, different one voices, I wish sometimes not the same voice. So others will go away. Any any male voice, please. Okay. Or oh, no male. Okay. Fine. Yes, sir. Oh, who are you? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Subham. So good, great, Subham. So are you getting it? This is you have already done. Some of you are expert, but it is a good, quick uh, numpy is very fundamental thing because with the numpy we will go to the tensorflow and pytorch uh, this the commands is 99.9 .9 same uh, the, the advantage with um, um, tensor that you can work it with one gpu right now you all aware of cpu uh, central processing unit but whenever is a kind of 20 years back whenever we are coming to the computer field it's a kind of co-processor was available with Intel 8045, 8085, that's uh, Intel 8086, one co-processor for floating point operation. Uh, same uh, right now in your laptop, probably whenever you buy laptop or desktop, you get it uh, optional for NVIDIA graphics card. And your NVIDIA graphics card is capable uh, certain operation, image operation, and uh, in floating point operation is much faster, maybe around 10 times faster than your CPU. So right now, the what is our interpreter and compiler, whenever they are seeing such kind of data, they divide it and to run it on uh, GPU, that is called graphics processing unit, and sometimes tensor processing unit, your collab is given free. You may, you may configure your collab uh, free processing unit. If you need uh, really graphics unit, you can configure free graphics unit. And whenever you are taking it, but you are not using, you will get warning that you are why you are taking resources because you are taking resources from pooled resources uh, all over the world. Google is sharing free. They are giving it free because they want it that useful uh, application might build up and that would be available on Android on Google Space. Uh, so that is the reason they are giving this environment free, and there you get the tensor and. At this tensor uh, uh, operation, because you know probably uh, for our gravitational wave, for uh, physics calculation, 
or spectroscopic calculation, there's all huge kinds of data because uh, when I see the, uh, whenever the, uh, uh, determining the age of uh, our solar system or our earth or our galaxy or what is the nearest galaxy from us, we are not getting, we are getting only the light through the, our telescope, maybe Hubble telescope or uh, terrestrial telescope. And the, te the telescope, you get uh, various optical ranges from there we can see so wh which what kind of elements can be there in that remote uh, space uh, because they radiate as per that and you can get how long it takes all this uh, processing can be done by this huge processing and uh, it takes a huge amount of time and that should not be done on cpu because cpu is poorly performed for this you need a uh, GPU uh, or TPU tensor processing unit. The our basically the three-dimensional matrix. You can take it as a as a tensor, and there is a two competitive utilities are there. One is Google is uh, coming to TensorFlow 2.0 version, and another Facebook, another famous company. They are also developing uh, PyTorch, and both are equally good. Stiff uh, competition. My earlier student process group, my present process group in uh, third year, final year, they are working on a great work on this uh, TensorFlow. And uh, this TensorFlow I uh, taking as a, a huge kind of data and uh, MRI images data and various images data. And they do it on TensorFlow. And TensorFlow is 99.9 .9 compatible with uh, NumPy. NumPy is a model for them. And so all the commands would run as TensorFlow. And the advantage is you can get it a 10 times faster through your uh, GPU at your laptop or desktop or at the colab. So that is great because whenever you straightforward code in uh, C and Java, you do not get the advantage. That is the advantage of Python here. here. So you can import NumPy or import TensorFlow. Uh, then you can uh, make your code uh, so that the code can be run on GPU or TPU and that is much much faster than your C code and uh, much much faster than Java code. So Python is basically meant for this kind of job. Mm, uh, so I am quickly coming to this. Any question you can you can give a question or at the end you can take question too. Thank you. Okay so here I am just a empty array. I have initially is 1 to 8 and great and then I just see append and append one or two. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. It. It. See. I have. I have. I have just a minute, please. Yeah. Uh, this is. Uh, and there. That is great. Thank you. Please have. This mouse is very fast. Please wait. This is, and this is the array. Great. This is the array, and uh, and then and then I uh, add one or two to it. Let's see what is output. Let's see. I'm not seeing it. That is the thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I should have print it here. Print it. Print. Print. Print it. Yeah. Actually, it will be added two times. Once it is added, one, two, then again add. Here, it is. See, one. It already one, two is added. The at that time, I have not given the print text command. Now I give in a print test command, run it again. So one, two added two times. So first is one, two, three, four, eight. This one, two added in the first command. If you add it once, if you run it once more, this, this one, two will be added once more time. See here, one, two, one, two, one, two. Great. Now I want to delete. This is the append command. This is empty append. I, I can delete command. I want to delete uh, one. See, I am getting it all. And then also, yeah, I am delete one. First element. Uh, what happens? What happens? 
So there will be two ones, phi will be deleted, phi not be deleted, let's just take it here. Delete. Yeah. Yeah, it is one for not zeroth element. This is the first element. Two is deleted. Please check. Please check that two is deleted. One, three. Two is deleted. Are you getting? Please, if anybody has understood the why the two is deleted? Because I have said the command np dot delete x comma one, not zero. That is the reason two is deleted. Please, Shubham, are you getting? Shubham, Shomolina, Shomusri. Are you getting this? Is the screen visible? Am I audible? Please. Yes, sir. Thank yes, you. Thank you. Okay. Why yes, is deleted? That is the reason. I also forgot. That. I thought one should be deleted. No, because I have stated one is a here. The index is like C like. If the zero is the first element, first is the one is the second element. Yeah, you can give it the sort command. That is another interesting. And here you see whenever you are learning, you are learning data structure. The sort, uh, various sort techniques are there. Uh, please, uh, I have one YouTube uh, videos for um, final year student on sorting. Sorting can be uh, various types. Uh, I think just quick introduction to sorting. Sorting can be uh, two types, comparison type and without comparison type. Without comparison is like radix sort, counting sort, uh, that there is a restriction in a data type, that data type should be within this range and data type should be uh, some um, uh, uh, should not be should not be floating point type. It should be not continuous type data. It should be discrete type of data like your exam marks uh, in your class test zero to twenty four five, not twenty four five, not twenty four point two or nineteen point two. It is a either zero one two three four or twenty five. This kind of data you can do it for counting sort or you can do it for radix sort. These are non comparison sort. But generally, the comparison sort data, you compare data with data. There are two different techniques. One you compare with one data each. There are techniques, uh, the bubble sort, the insertion sort, and selection sort. Uh, th this kind of sorting just gives you O n square. And whenever you divide and conquer, whenever you get a lots of data, you divide, chop it off, and again chop it off, again chop it off, and you uh, this thing, you uh, then you merge it. Then the mass sort. That is the best data, the best uh, sorting algorithm for all practical purposes. Uh, mass sort. When you divide and divide, and but you don't divide whenever it reach 32 because at that time insertion sort is much faster. So this combination of uh, mass sort and insertion sort and give you a thin sort that uh, I have discussed. Uh, that is in built in in, uh, in uh, this is NumPy and also quick sort is also built in. Uh, NumPy and insertion sort all are built in. You have to tell which kind of sorting algorithm. And you know, divide and conquer means it will always give the uh, log n advantage. So instead of n square, your comp uh, algorithm will be uh, O n log n, and it should be also stable. What is stability criteria of sorting algorithm? That means when the uh, data, same data is coming in input, output also the uh, the uh, the trend, the first come first serve should be there. The, if the two values, three values of three comes, the old uh, red, blue, green, output also red, blue, green should be the three. So the order should be not blue, gray, red. this cannot be done. That is unstable. Unfortunately, quick sort is unstable, though it is quick. Heap um, sort is unstable. Mass sort, thin sort are very stable algorithm. Insertion sort is stable algorithm. So most of the whenever number of items, this is a, you can take it as a thumbs rule that if it is a number of elements is 32 or 64, in, go to the insertion sort. That is the best sorting algorithm when the number of items is 32. And beyond that, uh, best algorithm is mass sort and thin sort. Uh, mass sort is divide and divide and, and then whenever you whenever two s sorted arrays you are com you co you're combining you get advantage of n not n square whenever two sorted arrays you are combined the complexity is n not n log n so all over com complexity when you are dividing you are getting a log n and whenever you get it the, the total complexity is n log n that is the mass sort mm, uh, okay so all this uh, sorting uh, why i am telling all these things because you can get the sort data you don't have to write uh, application for it. You already all these um, good uh, techniques are built in in 
Python NumPy. So I will just uh, write it on sortx np dot sortx. Hopefully it should come. Yeah, great. See here, yeah, yeah, it's not getting. Up. Please, please be there. Yes. You see the command. This is when we say np dot sortx, it is sorted data. It is sorted the data. You can also I'll I'll share the note. You can you can give it which kind of sorting. It will be there in details. And uh, another way is np dot array. I am initialized with type with the data array. Yes, it is there. Sortx. You can give the sortx. Just see. This is hopefully this is too fast sometimes. Yes. 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 This is I, this I have shown you, and this is uh, hopefully yes. The same thing. This is I guess. Okay. So uh, with this, um, lots of examples can be given. Uh, this uh, uh, links will be given. Uh, what about the summarily? I have told you the the NumPy is much much faster than uh, Python. It's almost like C. Moreover, the advantage is lots of built-ins like uh, your sorting, appending, uh, manipulations. Not only that, you can get the eigenvalues, um, eigenvectors, your linear algebra is almost solved there. All the routines are proven routines are there. So you can think ahead. You can think more uh, like algorithms because right now our team are interested in COVID-related activities for contact tracing or um, this uh, uh, data because people are really con confused over the COVID because uh, why in Europe again go to the second or third lockdown and we have uh, uh, at Kerala the Onam festival after 10 15 days lots of huge cases 35 percent increase but in uh, in Western region um, uh, Puja the lots of uh, 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 Mixing was there, but we are not getting the output. Maybe we are the locals running yesterday, so we have to get the contact tracing and why the data is coming not there. So we are really scared about COVID because you know in Brazil or even Argentina, where the tropical situation, uh, if it's a cold situation, definitely it will be bad. Uh, like when the pollution is affecting now in Kolkata, so pollution affects it will sound. So we are really scared. So we have to get lots of data from various places like John Hopkins and all this and uh, we are processing on it and uh, come with a model uh, which model will uh, give you the correct idea. So then you have uh, this kind of uh, data processing job or um, data intelligence job you need a um, NumPy and a TensorFlow. Um, today I try to give a little idea of NumPy. Uh, I try to make uh, more functional uh, on NumPy and uh, TensorFlow. I hope you would like it. Now the platform is open for course 